I must find the perfect spoon. Excuse me, I need a spoon. My spoon is too big. Spoon with me, dude! Hi, welcome back to the second episode of the Little Spoon Snatchers. I'm Sam Beal, here with Skip Nasty, the Skipster, and Logan. We got a full plate for you today. Uh, actually, we're going to start off with cream of the crop, everybody's favorite. I know it's mine. It could yeah, it's be up there. It'd, it'd be on my cream of the crop. Uh, then we're <laughs> going to follow that with Logan's brain food. New segment, baby. I'm excited to get going with that one. Let's go. Then, <laughs> let's go. Get up. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Then we're going to go over to NFL charcuterie and make our picks for this week for the five games. Uh, and then we'll finish it off with Song of the Week. Are you guys ready to get going? I'm ready. I just want to give Logan a little justice there. Um, you kind of were going through. I'm here with Skip, Nasty, the Skip Man, and Logan. Hey, that's a, hey, that's alright. Hey, you introduced yourself last week as Skip Nasty. That's true. That's you know, that's really, yeah, it's really my fault. You don't need not, a nickname. For not hyping myself up and Come on. I'll, 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 I'll be your hype man. Come on. Lo Logie Bear. Come on. That's right. Come on. Come on. Yeah. You don't need a nickname. <laughs> yes, sir. Cool. Come on. <laughs> alright. Alright, so... Cream of the crop to start it? Let's go. <laughs> Alright, uh, Skip, tell them uh, what we're going to do today. Oh, for crop. the cream of the crops? Yes, what's the topic, baby? <laughs> well, tonight... We are going to be ranking our top five television series. Mm. It's the best one, man. Best so TV far. shows ever. So yeah. far. Best, best. Cream of the crop so far. We'll see, we'll see. I think so. Because I am a very avid TV show watcher. I personally prefer TV shows more than I like movies. I do love movies. A good movie is great, but mm -hmm. a good TV show keeps me hooked, staying up till five in the morning. You know, can't beat that. Absolutely. I'm probably the opposite. Yeah. yeah, I don't really, I don't prefer movies. I prefer watching YouTube. Yeah, you know, that's I mean, what I am. Yeah. I, I, okay, that's, you that, caught that, us. That's exactly, I, I used to be a big TV show watcher, and lately yeah. I just, I feel like I haven't had time, and you know, you can go on YouTube and watch hundreds of different, you know, anything. video, yeah, anything, videos. Anything. So, uh, but I have watched a lot of TV shows as well. I'm very excited about this. Um, so yeah, get into it. Sam, I'm you want to oh, start? Yeah, me too? Who starts? Right, I'll start, I'll start. This one was very hard for me to come to. I have this, like, from five till three, I switched them all the way around, all over the place. But I came to the conclusion that my number five TV show is Shooter. If I, have you guys ever seen it? Never even heard of it. I thought you were talking about my dad. <laughs> it is an amazing show. It's Bob Lee Swagger. He's an, a retired American uh, sniper. And, like, he gets hired to... Uh, to track down this person because like the president is doing a speech and um, they've gotten like reports from a, a terrorist group that the the guy was gonna or he's, there was a sniper that's gonna take out the president and then they hired him to track down where that guy was gonna do the shooting at mm -hmm. and then he was framed I've that's heard like the it. first episode yep. there is there's a movie that came out about it and everybody likes the movie better I think Mark Wahlberg's in the movie but um, the TV show was just unbelievable. Mm -hmm. And I, I, it was one that I would just continuously watch. And it was all the way up to number three, but then I just rearranged it. But it is a great show. I recommend it to everybody. You will stay up till five in the morning and uh, watch the rest of it. What channel was that on? I want to say it was on Fox or FX. Was it a Fox? But I'm not sure because I watched it on Netflix. Most mm -hmm. of the TV shows that I actually have watched weren't on TV other than... Is, is it, um, how many seasons is it? I, it's, it's three. That's the real reason why it kicked down to number five for me. Because it, there, there was enough, but it could have added, you could have had more. How do you, how do you fit three seasons of that, though? It feels like it's a one season, guy gets framed, guy ends up being it. I mean, I guess you television people can... You gotta watch it. You gotta watch it. See, that's my thing with TV shows, though, is I think sometimes... People want more, and people associate the more seasons, the better. And I sometimes disagree. And we've we've talked, and we have select um, shows. I'm not going to mention any, but that you know they go too long, and sometimes like the more seasons you put out, the likely that one of them's going to be bad. Mm -hmm. And 
you know, it might turn people away and you might steer from the main objective. So, like, the shorter, the sweeter sometimes. Oh, oh And yeah. I think some pro some show produ production agencies and things like that, um, they sort of just try to go bigger the better and the more the better. But I, I kind of find simplicity. So three seasons is, is good. That's, oh, a quick, that's a quick watch. That's easy. Yeah. yeah, I think they were, like, 45-minute episodes or so. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it, it, like I said, like, it, I, it did leave you at, like, ah, oh, I'm wish there was a little bit more so that's why it fell on a five but like you said it was very simple it got to the point and it entertained you for every single minute of the show so that was my number five nice. all right my list um looking at it it's a little it's a little wild out there <laughs> i'll tell you what i did i took i made a top five personal favorite so like one through five like my favorite shows ever and i was going to just go with that list but then i also made like a top five just all around great TV shows. Mm. And then I kind of Frankenstein them together and came up with this monstrosity in front of me. Monstrosity. Like, and then I was like, okay, I like this show a lot and it's a really good one, so we'll put that on there. And I'm, I, I kind of like what my list is. It's missing a couple big ones, but we'll get to the honorable, men honorable mentions. Arnold. Arnold mentions. <laughs> Arnold mentions. <laughs> so, to start my list off, we're starting strong with... Big Time Rush. <laughs> guys, have you, you guys have both seen Big Time Rush. Absolutely. Really? But have you seen it all the way through? Uh, probably not. I'm probably, I'm probably not. Uh, that's your mistake. <laughs> I think one of the band members has a really great name. <laughs> okay, we're going to be done with that. <laughs> Let me tell you why Big Time Rush is in my top five. First reason, um, they have... In not only my opinion, but I believe like Harvard's probably done studies on it and stuff like that. The single greatest pilot episode of any TV show ever. Wrong. No, here's the thing. It's tough for a TV show to get the pilot episode right. Big Time Rush not only got it right, they like hundred like they aced it. Wrong. What show? Is it one on your list? Yeah. Okay, we'll get to it later then. But it's not better than Big Time Rush. Go watch the Big Time Rush pilot. It's perfect. Introduce the characters, the story, everything. And then the other reason, go watch the two scenes where <laughs> where Kendall leaves and they have to sing worldwide. I mean, that's, mm. a, that's a great song. That's a great song. It's, it's a great, great show. Song. It's a great with a cop song. Yeah. I, absolutely. And <laughs> then go watch when Kendall comes, or not Kendall, Joe. I said Kendall. Wow. When Joe comes back and he has to choose between Lucy and Joe, his two loves. Wow. Oh my gosh, guys. And then they sing No Idea. And that's another thing. They sing songs during the show. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Do any of you have a, have, a, have a show on your list where they sing a song during the show? I, yes. Oh, okay. I, I don't. See? Chris Masters was in the second episode. <laughs> <laughs> we'll throw that out there, too. Oh, what a great show. All right. We want to hear Logan's <laughs> five. We're enough. All them. right. Gross. My number five. <clears throat> and... Uh, looking at my list, I'm very happy with my list. Mm -hmm. um, I, I I love my list, and like you said, you sort of ranked yours a bunch of different times, and all the, I, I'm in love with my list. And uh, so number five, I have rounded out, which is The Witcher. Um, I mentioned this last week, um, and it's and the only reason it's at number five is sort of a similar reason you put yours at five is because it only has one season. Um, it's coming out with more, but there's only one season so far, and it, the first season, it, it's just amazing. Um, do you guys know the premise of The Witcher? Mm, Absolutely not. It's, so it's sort of like a setting, like uh, Game, of, uh, Game of Thrones or Lord of the Rings. It's like uh, medieval fantasy type thing. And there's these people, they're called witchers. They're basically bounty hunters, except they're sort of taken when they're babies, and they use magic on them, they're trained, and they're sort of raised to feel like they have no feelings or they're very good at combat and all this type of thing so that's obviously a controversial thing um and they're like i said they're bounty hunters around the world so if somebody's like hey a werewolf's eating all of my crops or my livestock here witcher go take care of it go kill it and they're bounty hunters for mythical creatures um and all that and so it's and they're raised, like I said, to have no feelings. So there's um, people hate witchers, and they're, it's a controversial thing. So they've sort of banned the practice of creating witchers. And but th this this show follows one specific witcher. 
his name's Geralt of Rivia, and he sort of has a moral compass, and that's like the whole point of it. And um, it, it's just really cool, really, uh, it's got a good storyline, a lot of drama, a lot of action, a lot of fighting, um, cool CGI creatures and all those types of things. Um, and if it's on track, like how this first season was, it will be my number one favorite show of all time. And to top it all off, um, this is the show that has a song in it, and it becomes its theme song, and it is super catchy, and it is super you fun. You used to play that song <laughs> all the time, and I forget what it, it's something like give the witcher a quarter. Toss a coin to your oh witcher. Oh my gosh. It it's, is a fun, it, so it's not good. Is that what you're saying? It is good. <laughs> I would, I, I, I would listen to it, um, if I were you guys. All right, quick pull around yeah. the table. Toss a, toss a coin to your witcher. Or worldwide. worldwide. Uh, Are worldwide. we being serious? It's not here? even a question. Oh, what a terrible. Oh, what another is, question. Well, when you stack it up to that, another yeah, question. I mean, that's, Failed to yeah. Lose. yeah. Was this not your number one game last week? It was my number two game. Number two game last week. And this, me watching the show, is what made me go play the games. And like I said, this is five because it only has one season out so far. And if if it continues to grow and has more seasons then it could potentially be ruined because that's sort of what happens you know some people mm -hmm. like the writers take their own free liberties and those types of things um so and that's why i'm saying if at this pace it will be my favorite show but right now i only have the one season season two is coming out soon um 2022 early 2022 so i'm very excited for that and that will also dictate but as of right now Fifth favorite show. Fifth best show. All right. Would recommend to anybody. It's a quick watch. Very addicting. You're up with number four here now, ah, Logie. Number four. Number four is another show about um, fighting mythical creatures. You have and, a niche, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but instead, instead of a fantasy realm and, you know, bounty hunters, uh, magical bounty hunters, it's set in, you know, real life. America and the world, and it and it follows uh, two brothers, the Winchester brothers, in Supernatural. That's, That's a good guy. show. It's a great show. Yeah. Never seen it. it well, never once. It, so that not show, one episode. Never. I put the show out there. It has a lot of seasons, and it, it, there's a lot of different storylines that go into it. And y you know, probably you'll you'll like some, you'll hate some, but they all they come and go. And th so this is the exact opposite. There are so many seasons. Probably. 15 plus yeah. at this point of seasons for this show but it does it gives you such a variety because at the beginning few seasons it's just the two brothers Sam and Dean going out and hunting monsters hunting ghosts hunting ghouls um, saving people and then in so there's that which is which is really cool and really fun and then it goes into more storylines where they sort of bring in like the devil Lucifer um, all these other mythical things so you kind of have the best of both worlds. If you like one, you can just watch early and then late, and then it all sort of ties together. And I think that they're still making episodes they are. too. It, yeah. So, I mean, that sort of gives it some accolades and how good it is. It's continued to go, and I remember watching it. Um, I've watched it twice through, and I, I think it, I, I think it's really good. And it is long, so if you want to watch it, be prepared to go through a long haul. Yeah. But yeah. I think, I mean, I'm, my experiences with it, it actually was, like, one of the first TV shows that I started, like, religiously watching, like, every, every new week. episode mm -hmm. with a new week it was my, with my brother, and it was a lot of fun to watch, and there was, it was very enticing and just made you keep wanting to watch more. My issue with it was what we were talking about earlier, is there, it went on too long. Yeah. There was an end, and it was like you could hit it there with bringing in heaven and hell and all this other junk, but then they just kept trying to expand it yeah. and keep making more, and that's where it lost me. Like There was just way too much content for yeah. me to... It certainly yeah. lost me too, but it's one of those things to where I can go and I can watch the first five seasons and then not have to get into that mm -hmm. and, and be perfectly content. Mm -hmm. And so... Yeah, that, that, like that, that could be a hindrance, and it could be a benefit to some people, but... I think it's yeah. a great show. Yeah. Skip. Oh. All right, guys. I'm about to change the game with this one. As, as I've already mentioned, I love music in my TV shows. And I would argue that this TV show has the greatest theme song, the greatest intro song, the most iconic intro song of any TV show ever, and that's Cops. 
We're going with cops here. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Guys, if we're talking about quality TV shows, you're telling me that you don't want to watch cops? I do love cops. Guys, let's talk about this. Uh, how many seasons? 33 seasons of these cops driving around catching criminals. If you need something to watch, I guarantee you, I guarantee you, you just go to your TV, scroll through, you will find cops on one of the channels somewhere, and you can just sit there and watch it for hours. I know for a fact the cops doesn't come on until 4. Oh, no, oh, not until <laughs> <laughs> Listen. Good, good joke. <laughs> I mean, how, how can you go wrong with cops? By turning it on. Are you kidding me? Are you not a cop? That's guy? a bad tape. I don't watch it. I don't like it. You don't like cops? No. You don't like watching. You don't like watching the men and women women who serve our country protect Sam, us Sam, every day. Sam, do you do you back the blue? Oh my, oh my gosh! Dude, I, I don't watch the TV show. What? <laughs> this is. I mean, it's probably the easiest watch of any show ever. No. There's no, because there's no story to follow. Each episode's different. <laughs> there you go. Like, the story's all there. You just turn on an episode, you sit there, you watch it for hours. That's all you need. I, I do agree with you that it is fun to watch, and I do find enjoyment out of it. I never really just put it on. But that is something where, like I said, through the YouTube, where I'll watch compilations of cops, like, mm -hmm. you know, the craziest, uh, the craziest traffic stops, you know, and then they just turn into this big whole thing where <laughs> yep. it was just a traffic stop and then the guy ends up getting busted for, like, cocaine and stuff. It is very, I, I, I like that pick. I like that pick a lot. He's on my team. I'll, I'll back, I'll back you, Skip. <laughs> okay, well, I, I do not. No. I thought I thought you were going a different route with that. Pick, what did you think I was going with? I'm gonna wait until you. Oh, is it on your list? No, it could still be on your list. Best intro song? Yeah. Okay. It could still be on your list. Okay. Uh, when you said that, I'll say this because I know it's not on anybody's list. I thought of iCarly. Ooh, that's a good intro song. <laughs> I hope that's not on your list. Zoe no. 101. Oh, is no. that on anyone's list? Zoe 101. That's an intro song. Guys, what are we doing? Guys, we gotta do we top got, five we intro have to, songs we next to week. Throw out our cream of the crop. <laughs> Number four. Uh, my number four is Shameless. I mm, love Shameless. Mm. I think there was a point where I kind of like, it was getting to the point where it was too long. Uh, I think once like Fiona left the show, that was kind of where I lost interest. Mm. But up to it, like it was just awesome to see like this is like an, an every, like an average American family. I wouldn't call it average. Oh, yeah, <laughs> not I, average, it's, but it's, it's pretty... like... But it's like, I don't know, it's an American family. You just, like, see the struggles of real-life yeah. things happening, yeah. and then it adds the twist of being funny, and then it adds the twist of, like, like drugs and alcohol. And it's just a really good show to me. I enjoy every single second of it. And how can you beat Kevin? Like, Kevin's the best. He's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've only ever seen the first season, Ooh. but I binge-watched the first season, yeah. and it was good. It was a good yeah, one. I watched I probably the first four or five. Yeah. yeah. Seasons? No. Oh. I thought he meant episodes. I was like, no, no, yeah. Lip, I've seen it. Lip sweet. <laughs> it made me, when I thought of like all the characters, and I was thinking of the little characters, I was thinking of the scene with Lip where he's like at the sorority house and he like couldn't like get it up. So <laughs> he had his grandma like give him a foot massage. <laughs> you ever I, seen that part? I, You've never I, seen that part? I don't remember that. Whatever season that was in, I must have skipped that episode. <laughs> Lip was off at college or whatever, being like the sorority how or the the for no so you know it was the sorority girls oh, the yeah. girls she sorority was like girls. their house person or whatever mm -hmm. and like they would always try to like like bang him and whatever yeah. and he, he like couldn't get it up at one point so like he was like talking to his uh, grandma who was staying there at the time or yeah his grandma was staying there at the time and she was like oh I know your problem honey and then rubbed his foot and then worked as good as new. <laughs> All right, number three. Well, yeah, I'm. Uh... <laughs> oh, it's a good. It's a good show, guys. You gotta watch it. I I think that show. The cool part about that show is it, like you said, it kind of shows. Um, it, it it's not average in any. That's any why I, that was bad. No, no, but but it is like a different world and a world that people do live in. So it was kind of a cool way to like show that you know that that is like they're in poverty. And you know their struggles and everything like that, and in that sort of city and those sort of problems. Yeah. Um. So it showed that, but it it kind of you know it made it funny in a way. So it ha it yeah it has its moments. I like sure. I like that a lot. No, obviously it's number four on my list. <laughs> number three, 
Friday Night Lights. I was that was a, a strong contender for my list. Oh, v- not honorable dude. mentions, but str- it's probably top ten. So good. So have mm-hmm. you ever seen it? I've not. You gotta watch it. You like football and you haven't seen it. Oh my god. It's a great. I, I don't even know what it's about. It's better than football, the movie. Football show. It, it, it is so good. Like the the TV show, the Dylan Panthers. Like they go through their state run or whatever. It, it is just an awesome show all the way around. And they have such cool characters and like Matt Saracen, mm-hmm. like the backup quarterback who takes over for the guy who gets paralyzed in like the first play of the game. Like spoiler. Yeah. This, <laughs> I'm gonna go back and because I haven't seen it in so long. But like when I was like thinking of shows I want to put on my uh-huh. list, that was one that came to mind. I was like, I gotta rewatch it before I can put it on my list. But uh-huh. I, and I planned on rewatching it. That's the only reason it's not. It's wow. really cool because it takes you into like like you were saying about the the Shameless show about like all the uh, things that it shows you. But this show it takes you into the journey of like an upper echelon football team, like high school football team, and like what they go through and like uh, how they have to play all these crazy like good teams and and how all these uh, adversities they have to go through. And it's just a lot of fun. And then uh, the coaches. Uh, Awesome. Like he's just a good character. It's Taylor, right? Coach Taylor. Yeah. I don't remember. Yeah, I haven't seen Coach it in so Taylor. long. It's Coach Taylor. <laughs> but yeah, right. <laughs> like yeah, it's it sounds right. Yeah, I haven't watched it in a long time either. And uh, I was just talking to Megan about that show, like before I came here, and she was like, Oh, I've never seen it and I was like, Are you kidding me? I mean, like, you we, guys are watching we, it. I was like, Yeah, guess what what I'm rewatching. I next. think this whole table's gonna be watching it within the week. Yeah. We have to. You, you have to. You will love it, Logan. It yeah. is like right up your alley. I mean I guess not like mythical creature alley, but yeah, wait. it's none of that. But. No, okay, well, wait, wait till you hear the rest of my list. Oh. <laughs> it's not all mythical creatures. <laughs> all right, yeah, that's my number three. Good Friday number three, lights. quality number three. Okay, um, Logan, I'm kind of barking up your tree with this one. We're getting a more mythical, you know, kind of realm here. Uh, we're going to the upside down with Stranger Things. Have you you've seen it? I have seen it. I would it. assume you've seen it. I have seen it. Have you seen it? I have. You've seen it. It's I, I would assume that that's one that I've once seen. Yeah. That's a good show. I do think it's good. Mm-hmm. I do not think it's top five or even honorable mention worthy. Mm, I had to put it top five. I put it three. Um, I just remember because I I was super late. Like I don't watch a lot of TV, so I didn't really watch it. And then like a year after it was like huge, I was like I'm gonna watch it. And I was like, that's a good show. I see why people like it. And that's my problem with TV shows is that, like, I don't have time to watch TV shows. But when I do, I just become, I go all in. Yeah, I, I go all in on them. I'm the same way. And so it was, I mean, yeah, it was fun to watch. Hopper might be, like, my favorite character of any character in any show ever. I love Hopper. Really? I love Hopper. I, I will say I love Stranger Things. Yeah. And um, it is in my honorable mention. Okay. Um, I think the kids are phenomenal actors, um, especially Will, in like the second or third season. Mm-hmm. Like when he like yeah. when he's like being attacked by the alien. Yeah. Like, it actually seems real, and that kid is like I don't know eleven, twelve. Like mm-hmm. it's so they're, they're all so good, and I, I like the plot. Um, the only problem I had with it, and which is why I, it 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 was close to my top five, um, but I hated it in the last season. How and I didn't finish last season because of this, but they like those, and that's sort of where the disconnect came from was because like the show's about kids, mm-hmm. and I know it's like a different world where like aliens exist and all that stuff, so it's already unrealistic. But it's unrealistic for those kids to outsmart and outthink the Russian government and the Russian CIA mm-hmm. and like you know be able to like go through the vents and like you know get past. Russian security like that was just seemed unrealistic to me and it kind of seemed like lazy writing mm-hmm. um, but other than uh, take away that the first two seasons I thought were really amazing really great it's on my honorable mention great I'm pick. excited for the new season I didn't even know there was a new season they released like a teaser thing and Hopper who spoiler he dies um, he's <laughs> like, so Hopper who's dead mm-hmm. is seen like working on a farm in Russia somewhere oh wow so he's not dead but he's bald and he's like a Russian guy. I just never got on the hype with it. I mean, I, I've definitely watched like mm-hmm. the first season and the second, I think. But I, I just was like, eh, it's just, it's okay. It's a good show, but it's not like great. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Yeah, I also enjoyed it. Logan. Okay, my number three 
is um, by far the funniest show I have ever watched in my life. And um, if a lot of people have heard of it and have never watched it. And that is Arrested Development. Mm. I don't know if you guys have ever watched it. I've never even heard of it. Oh, I know what you might be on. You've never heard of it? I've never even heard of it. You've never heard of it? He's... You've tried to get me to watch it, and I never have. <laughs> <laughs> well, this show stacks up to those, you know, those those long, a lot of seasons, um, episodes um, of comedy shows. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not going to name a few because I'm, I'm obviously scared they're going to be on people's lists. Uh, like Parks and Recreation, I don't think that's on anybody's list. That was that's the one that I watched of Parks all and those, Rec. and that's yeah, that was good. And I I liked Parks and Rec a lot. Um, I really like Parks and Rec, but then I watched this show, and it was so funny, and it is... It, it, I don't know how to describe the humor in it. Like, it's dry like The Office, but it's like... It's so... It, they get away with making jokes funny that have no business being funny. <laughs> like, for example, and I'll use this example. <laughs> they, one of the people's names, one of the main characters' names is Lucille. And she has, like, um, an autistic son who, like, she kind of, like, has control over who kind of, they have, like, attachment issues. And, like, he kind of hates her. Um, and in one of the episodes, a seal gets, escapes the zoo or escapes, like, a magic act. And one of the punchlines is, like, someone's yelling at him because he's swimming in the water. Loose seal. A loose seal. <laughs> it has no business being that funny <laughs> and it is so funny like he starts freaking out because he thinks it's his mom and it's a loose seal and like it has no business being hilarious but the scene is so funny they do it so well and the the beautiful part about this is they wrote this entire show before they filmed it so they have so they always have little easter eggs that kind of come back but they have easter eggs from the first episode that don't get resolved until the very last episode and that's something cool that i've found yeah. it's like you, you'll see something that they'll they have reference three 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 episodes ago or something or even the same episode and it, it does flow super well um the problem is they 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 cut it short and then netflix tried to like reboot it um recently and all the characters are like five to ten years older, and it's so it's so obvious, and it, and that season's pretty bad. Um, but it's things like that, and it it is so funny. If you haven't watched it, I would recommend watching it. Um, maybe we'll watch it. It, it is it is so funny. It, out of the comedy shows I've watched, and I've watched about all of them, it is by far the one that's made me laugh the most, and um, that's why it's number three on my list. Are you? You up with two now? Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay. My number two. Hey, good pick. Thanks. Yeah. Never I, I actually, I'm intrigued. Is it on Netflix? Yeah. Oh, I'm going to yeah. have to try and watch it. I'll probably watch it. <laughs> I mean, yeah. yeah just, that, also, that, the, that looks hilarious. Like, the, that's funny. The this cast of character. Yeah, there's so many stupid little jokes like that as well. Like, one of the jokes w was, uh, there's two brothers, and one of them was, like, in prison. Like, as he's a magician. He's trying to be in prison and trying to break out. And... Um, and the other brother, since he was in prison, is, like, trying to get with his wife, who is, like, an immigrant, and, um, the other brother doesn't treat him right, so he's, like, I, I really like her, she's really nice and all this stuff, so he's, like, he goes to her house with flowers, and while he's in prison, though, he gets stabbed, like, in his back, and so, like, somebody call, as soon as he opens, he rings the doorbell, the, the wife opens up the door, and then the phone rings, and she's, like, oh, no, your brother's been stabbed in the back. Is like, because he's there trying yeah. to get his wife and literally was stabbed in the back. So it's also a stupid, I mean, I didn't describe that well, but it's also a stupid thing that that shouldn't be funny. Like, you didn't laugh, no. but watching it is so funny and it's so stupid. <laughs> and yeah, it's, it, it is, it is very, very good. The cast is super, um, a lot of big names in there too. But If there's anything I love, it's stupid humor. It's true. It's so funny. Okay. Number two, moving on. Oh, I get to go back to back two. Wow, that's incredible. Number two is a show that I think I'm the only one here that's watched. It's called Gotham. Batman. It is a Batman show. Um, and the reason this is so high on the list is because this is mine and Kelsey's um, favorite show. We've, we watched it all the way through. She loves it. 
Um, we're about to watch it through a second time. It, it is really good. It's my third time watching it. Um, it, it, it basically, it's not really Batman. It, it mostly goes through the perspective of James Gordon, Commissioner Gordon. And um, Bruce Wayne's in it, but he's not Batman. It's, it, it takes place, the first episode is when Bruce's parents die. And like he's, he's sort of joined the f police force and he's sort of assigned to that case. So like Bruce Wayne is probably like 10 to 18 throughout mm -hmm. the whole series. So it's not really Batman. It's, it's Commissioner Gordon and like Gotham and everything. And there's sort of like a coming of age of Batman and how he turns out to be. Um, so like it goes through Bruce, like him experiencing that and all that stuff. And a lot of the other villains like Penguin, the Joker, um, Poison Ivy, uh, Harley Quinn, all those people are all, it's their coming of age story. Like one of them, one of them was like a little chef and then he like worked his way up to being king of the underworld. And, and there's a lot of like politics in it. Um, it's not number one because some of the acting is pretty bad and like especially the first season But after that it gets a little bit better um, But I, I would recommend watching it. it. It's pretty cool. It's not like unrealistic um, Like it, it's not really Batman at all even though it's called Gotham So it's, it's just a different spin on it. I've watched it a few times um, Has good stories um, you know, like the main story of just being Gotham and then there's like side stories of like some villains coming in and being like a big whole big, big deal um, But yeah. I, I've heard that it's like Not a superhero movie at all a show it was superhero show, no. but it involves like super e Yeah, and yeah, I, 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 I can't that's the way that it was described to me is that it if you watch it if you get rid of like the fact that like, it's named Gotham. It's named Gotham. You wouldn't even think of it as a superhero yeah. show. No, you, what I mean. you, you really wouldn't. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No. Never seen it. I haven't seen anyone on your list, I don't think. Never <laughs> seen it. <laughs> How, uh, uh, Friday Night Lights. Yeah, Friday Night Lights. Okay. You've seen Shameless, too. Shameless, yeah. First season. I have seen Shameless, yeah. I don't watch a lot of TV. Right. Let's hear your number two. There. Uh, like my number two <laughs> is a show that Logan had me watch. So, I know you've seen it. Well, you didn't have me watch it, but I watched it for the first time with you. Mm. And then I continued watching it after. Mm. And that's New Girl. Ugh. That's oh. what I thought was the intro. It's oh, just, good song, good song. I was like, are you kidding me? Really? really? Number two. Number wow. Two. Moved it up to number two. Um, first time you watched it was when I showed you and Kelsey? No, first time I watched it, I was down in Mount Vernon. Oh, And we watched yeah. the Halloween episode. Oh, it's so Oh, good. yeah. Where they, and we watched Shrek. And then we watch Shrek. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, off topic. Who was that? Danny. Mm -hmm. Literally, I, I don't. I, he's never seen it. I guess. Died laughing. No, Danny's seen and it. At Shrek. He's seen it. Yeah. Dude, I thought he was like, like Danny <laughs> Shrek. He's the best person to watch movies. With. He he just laughs at everything. The smallest thinks, little thing. And he, he was dying. He, he was the person I watched Arrested Development with, and it's when you you watch something with him. And he laughs so hard. It just makes you laugh. And it just makes it funny. And maybe that's why Arrested Development is so funny to me. But the people I have talked to as well that have seen it also love it. But yeah, Danny is so funny to watch shows. See, now that I know that you watched Arrested Development with him, that's probably what made it so funny. That's probably what made it so funny. Oh. Wait, so he was laughing. So Danny was laughing at, at New Trek. Girl? Oh, Trek. at Trek. Oh, but probably he was dying. Oh, but probably Trek. New, New Girl too, yeah. But, all right, back to New Girl. <laughs> <laughs> that was the funniest thing I've ever seen. All right, back to New Girl. Um, great show. Great cast. Um, it is. Everybody just gets better. Schmidt is the best. Oh, Schmidt's the best. Far. He's TV one of the best. History. Yeah, he did, Sh might be. Schmidt's great. <laughs> Winston's great. Nick is, I mean. Coach. It, it's tough to, like, rank them. I don't like, really like Nick. You don't what? like Nick? No, I never. Oh, how do you not like Nick? I never. I only watched the first four seasons. Um, but I didn't really grow attached to Nick oh. at all. Oh. At all. Mm. This guy. This, yeah. this guy doesn't even know Nick. Mm. I, I hated when him and Jess got together. I, like, I had a water bottle in my hand and I threw it at the wall. Oh, you saw that coming from episode one. Don't act like it wasn't, like, building to him. <laughs> well, I was just mad. Oh, yeah? I just didn't want it to happen. Oh. Nah. You just hate true love? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> he's not, right. Clearly First not episode. true love. First episode, you just know yeah. it. I mean, great show. Uh, it's another one where, like, they have a lot of inside jokes, I guess, that, like, don't get resolved until later. And I thought, I think that's cool, like, what you were saying with the rest of development. One thing that I just learned, and that it's, it's going around, 
Did you know there was like a new thing that was on TikTok? TikTok discovered it. Every single episode of New Girl involves a bear somehow. I actually, now that you say that, I can picture like there is whether it's the Chicago Bears or someone like in a bear suit, or there was that dude named Bear. Like there is a bear in every episode somewhere. Hmm. So you got to go back, rewatch it, look for the bear in every episode. Every single episode. That's that's fun. But yeah, great show all around. Great, like it is. Um, okay. The ending was a little rushed, but other than that, great show. I do think so. The last season, last was season was a little rushed, rushed, but they had to do that because they were like cut. Like the network was like, "This is it. Yeah. That's your limit." So they had to rush it. But other than that, great show. Your number two is the one hundred. Nah, it is so unbelievably good. The one hundred, like it, like you guys were talking about with the cast being so great. Like they, everybody. Uh, on their cast was amazing. You had what Bellamy was like everybody's favorite from like day Absolutely. one. Uh, like it, it just goes on and on. There's so many things I could say about the show. Like it, I, I, I just recommend you watch it. Uh, that's the one where it was on the CW where I would go back and rewatch mm-hmm. it. Uh, season seven, like just finished. I want to say it was last last August, and it is might be one of the best seasons in all TV history. Like there, there is some points like like we've talked about where like it kind of disengages you a little bit. Uh, mainly the what the town, uh, the the season about the light. Um, City of light. City of light. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, like that that one was really tough to watch. But like like I said the last time we talked about it, the that sets up the entire storyline, and then. Like, it, it just takes you on a journey. Like, and each season, I think, gets better and better outside of the one with the City of Light. But they get better and better. And, like, you grow fond of these characters like Finn or Lincoln. Spoiler alert. No spoilers. I've never seen it. I've never seen it. Do you going to watch it? Probably not, no. You you, I it. mean, you should watch okay. it. Okay. <laughs> they both. Yeah, Actually, I'm not even going to spoil it because I want you guys to watch it. Let's see how long so, he does this. Yeah, <laughs> but no, I can't say enough about it. Like it is, I, I discovered this show uh, one night on Netflix, and I was like, "Oh man, I'll give it a go." And then I showed and told every single person I knew, like, "Hey, watch this show." And every single time, they came back to me and they said, "Yep, I watched it until five in the morning." Exactly what I said. Uh, and yeah, Are we good? I love it. Yep. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. What did you say? No. <laughs> he, he, didn't spoil, like, he didn't spoil a single thing. Yeah. Oh. Okay. I, you had a smile I wanted like them you to would... watch it too. I don't okay. want to spoil it. We just wanted it. to see how long you would plug your I, I really just like, there is, I could get into talks about the, the 100 over and over again. And then there's that song that plays at the end of season, or episode one, yeah. where it's like, uh, what's it called? I don't know what, I think it's like Home or something. And I, uh, Philip Phillips? No, oh. I just li- I've listened to that like the soundtrack is even good. I don't know. Home I can by just go Edward on. Sharp and the Magnetic Zeros. It might actually be. It's like Alabama, Arkansas. I just love my mom and pa. That one. It that isn't one. that one, but that is a good song. Dude, that is a good home song. is just that, that's how you name a song. Just name it home. Yeah, I don't know. I just like I get I got so emotionally attached to everybody, and I loved the show. Hmm. Storyline kept going and just keep getting me and more engaged. Good pick, good pick. Number one? Uh, and that would back be... Back to you? Yeah, it's back to me. And that's how I met your mother. That's yep. easy. I think, <laughs> I mean, mine were so concrete for number one and two with the 100 and How I Met Your Mother. I legitimately have watched How I Met Your Mother 10 to 12 times through. Like, though, that, I think it's in that, like, range. Somewhere in there. I, I can turn it on whenever I want. 30-minute episodes, and I, I seriously think that each episode is so jam-packed with such a great life lesson. Like, um, how, the, like the one that came to mind is when Marshall lost his father. It was the same day he found out he was having a kid. Like, those, it's like two great things that happened to somebody. And it's just like, it, it's just an awesome father. journey. Yeah, what's the great thing that happens? He gets it. <laughs> lose your, two yeah, great you things. Having a kid two, is a, great. a great thing and a terrible thing. Yeah, they offset. Thank you. Yeah, they okay. offset. Thank you. But yeah, like that's, I just think that show is so jam-packed with so many great life lessons and it's helped mold me and my beliefs, uh, I think. Hmm. Um, another cool thing about the show is you guys are talking about Easter eggs. Like they 
do so many Easter eggs with that show, like with the ducky tie or the slap bet or the pineapple in the first episode. And this one is the one I was saying where it is the best pilot episode of all time. Mm, you think so? Oh, 100%. <laughs> At, at the end of the episode, Barney's in the back of the cab car when they're going to go uh, get Ted to go meet up with Robin. Barney looks at everybody he's like, huh, Ted's going to get it on with a TV news reporter. This just did. And that, that alone, that line right there alone makes it the greatest episode ever. And I, I love every single second of that show. I'll tell you what. What? Similar to Shameless, I've only ever seen the first season but what happened was, I was sitting at home one night, it was like 9 o'clock at night, or I don't know, how, whatever the time, I turned it on, and I literally just watched the entire first season, and then I remember, I didn't even like think about it or realize I was doing it, but I look, I move my curtain, look outside, and the sun was up. And I was like, it, I literally just... It's that good? I, like, I will say, I didn't even like comprehend the fact that it could be 6 in the morning at that point. <laughs> but it was. And I was like, wow, I really just stayed up all night watching this entire show. It's unbelievably good. Like, all like five of them are like so unique in their own ways. But they like, they all have, like I said earlier, they have such great lessons to give the viewers. I mean, like you got Ted, the hopeless romantic, and then the Robin, who's like... Who's a hard-headed girl, and then Barney, who's the ladies' man. Like he's the, he br brings the joy and fun and everything. And then Marshall, the super caring, but he's like a, a loyal guy. And Lily, can't say much about Lily. She's probably my least favorite. I don't know. Oh yeah. But I I, mean, I like her still. I like the whole show. I wanted I want to get a ducky tie because of that. Why show. don't you get one? I want to do it. I heard the ending sucks. Yeah, I've also heard that. I've never finished. I've also it, heard. Sort of, I don't remember who said it, but I remember somebody other than you saying that the pilot episode was amazing. The, that was amazing? It was amazing. Yeah. Yeah, I, not, it wasn't from you, but I remember hearing that, but I also remember hearing about the finale as well. The finale, here, here's the thing. Like you just said yep. about New Girl, they were building it from episode one. Mm -hmm. Guess what? They were building it from episode one. The ending, uh, this, is, this has been so long ago that it, who cares if I spoil this? Ted and Robin end up together. Like Ted's Ted's wife ends up dying or whatever, and then it's Robin and Ted. They were building that from episode one. I mean, like he like he turns around and there she was, like a sailor across. Like that's the woman I'm gonna marry. I mean, come on. Like it was just bound to happen. So that's why I don't think the criti critics can sit there and bag on the ending too much. Like yeah, it it isn't exactly what you wanted to see, but. It was still great. I cried. <laughs> I was crying because it was over. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Same thing with uh, The 100. Actually, those were two shows. That I was. Were you with us? We were driving to Chicago for Warrior. When you cried? I was sitting in the back watching. I think I remember I was that. watching yeah. on my beats, and I was watching the last episode of The 100, and I was like sitting there like, like with a freaking uh, carload of wrestlers, and I'm crying in the back. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. I'm not gonna say. What? I, I, no, I, I was gonna admit to crying during one of my shows, but it's uh, kind of embarrassing. Until I was a big time rush. <laughs> I did cry. Did you <laughs> say cops? Yeah, last night was a cop that got me. Dude, big time rush got a staff finale, but but yeah, no, that's uh, got 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 to got to appreciate a good. Yeah, it's the best. I those are them. Yeah, that's so that's my list. That's what? a solid list. That's a quality list. But I'm gonna go with my number one. Um, my number one, uh, it's. A great show. They're still making episodes to this day, so that's how you know it's good. Oh god, mm. I already know it. There um, it is. and it is, um, it contain it contains graphic, uh, contains graphic stupidity. I don't know the thing, but it's a great show. Contains it's a graphic show. stupidity among four Contain, lifelong no, friends that can contains four lifelong friends competing. I was no, no, I, yeah, yeah, yeah was, you were right. It was, it contains stupidity. Graphic stupidity. Graphic stupidity amongst four lifelong friends who compete to embarrass each other. Yeah, yeah. that's what it is. Wow, it's not even my number one. That's Larry. Larry. Yeah, it's Impractical Jokers. It's the greatest show ever made. Yeah, um, hey, it's, it's... It's another one uh, <laughs> in the same vein as Cops, where there's no story, so you don't gotta, like, start from episode one and watch all the way through. You can just hop in whenever. And again, like, you know, like I said with Cops, it's literally always on. Like, you just go to True TV and it's on. And if it's not on True TV, then they got nothing else. Like the, the yeah, yeah, true only TV. reason that True TV is still a channel at this point today is because of Impractical Jokers. But just think about this, guys: four friends 
who go and they made a you they made a video, submitted it to a uh, uh, like uh, video challenge thing, and it ended up winning the grand prize. So they bought some equipment. They made a pilot episode. Uh, where they went into a movie theater, stood up and said, I peed my pants. <laughs> and then they pitched that and they ended up getting sold. And then these four 40-year-old dudes are now like millionaires. They have a movie. They have a cruise. They have action figures. They have 10 seasons. Like the fact that they turned a... Yeah. a it's the American dream. The, the fact that they turned, they spent their whole lives with this, you know, improv comedy group that they just out of the blue submitted a video won the grand prize and turned it into what what it is now it's just oh, they also had like what four or five spin-off shows yeah they had like the you know inside joker they have the mm. after party they have like their improv show that they did that didn't really work yeah, they those had, are all pretty bad oh uh, after party's awesome i watch every episode of after party inside joker <laughs> like you know you get to see all the cool things i will say i do enjoy a good impractical joker I know, like sitting down and watching like four or five episodes of it and there you go two hours gone and yeah. yeah i'll tell you this this is what i like most about it is whenever i turn on an episode the first thing i hear from my mom and dad when they're in the room they're like oh my gosh we've seen this episode a million times like are you kidding me it's still funny and then a minute later you hear my dad cracking up laughing you hear my mom laughing and they still get you yeah. every single time it is probably the show that has made me laugh the most where my ribs have hurt <laughs> like just laugh so un uncontrollably hard the worst though the worst punishment and i saw this the other day is the red x oh, on hurts. the kids <laughs> the kids pain oh yeah oh you want to cry and that's like, why some of them oh, just make no. you like some of them are make me so Homes uncomfortable can't watch. <laughs> And, but the ones that are so funny are just oh, so best. funny. Like, I think it's just mostly when punishments with Sal. Like, <laughs> that, that's favorite. probably that. Like, challenges with Joe and punishments with Sal are sort of what make that show almost. Yeah. Like, I, I like Mur a lot. Mm -hmm. Probably one of my favorite ones. Mm -hmm. But I think the other two are. I don't think Q really makes me laugh very much. But I think the other two are, are what make me like almost pee my pants <laughs> and it, it, another thing is that they're all so different that yeah, like you can are. have your yeah. favorite because like they're all they all go about challenges different and all that but then you just look at like watching some strip high five <laughs> that might be the greatest punishment <laughs> they need to bring it back just for a challenge or something that's the greatest punishment ever oh it's such a great show all right. Is. all right my number one we are um all going... different no repeats at all no repeats let's go um, my number one, um, for those of you who listened to the first two, you maybe could have predicted this one. We're going back to the realm of uh, mythical and fantasy. Um, it's got to be Game of Thrones. Nah. Um, oh, yeah, I, I mean, that. It, it, it has the accolades to um, as one of the most successful TV shows. Um, there, there are a lot of things with it that the storyline's really good. The last um, few seasons are a bit controversial because it surpassed the books. And the writers went their own liberties, and so obviously there's a little bit of differences there. But the CGI is really cool. The story is amazing. Um, you have all the different factions, all the different houses. So it's kind of like the the great debate of like, what house are you in in um, Harry Potter? Mm -hmm. You know, and it's like, oh, what house would you be in um, if you were in Westeros? And it, it's it's I have I have two of the the house flags in my room. Um, it, it's so good. The characters, all the acting is. So super amazing you know the the twists and turns like no character is safe like you think this person's a main character dies this person's a main character dies like it, it keeps you on your toes and i was lucky enough to kind of go into it um sort of when seasons one through seven were out so i only had to watch or no season one through six so i watched all all of those and i wasn't spoiled through anything and I was purely shocked at like the Red Wedding um, at the end of season one with Ned Stark. Like it's it's all crazy, and there's and there's so many there's so many storylines going on at one time, and it's so beautifully done. I think, um, and people do have problems towards the end um, with the seasons getting too long, but I think that's more so because they went past the books, and mm -hmm. you know when you do that, it's sort of like it's not really intentional. Like even the writer of the books. George R. R. Martin said, I'm not going to write the books 
um, how they did the movies. Like it's gonna go in a completely different way. And um, I, like like I said with you, me and your brother have we would watch season seven and season eight, and after every single episode, like break down everything that happened and what does this mean and everything. And your parents before the season finale binged it in like two weeks and then we printed off like a whole big paper like a whole big pamphlet and we had a we had a big competition of like we all guessed who was going to die and who was going to survive and who was going to be king and who was all of this stuff and it was just such a fun time and it was it really kept you on your toes even like the bad seasons of like the later ones which i aren't really bad you can enjoy them for what they are but game of thrones it's also a long haul but incredible yeah, I mean, I I only watched when what you were saying when my parents binged and then you guys all watched that last season. I, that's all I ever watched of it, so it almost isn't worth me going back okay. and rewatching just because I kind of know like I mean not oh, that man. I'm still gonna get shocked. I'm still gonna be like, oh that happened, but like I kind of know like where it all leads. Yeah, and, like, you know it's not. But um, I don't know. I don't feel like enough people died. I feel like that was the big complaint <laughs> in the end. There. I feel like in the end there, in that last, those last seasons, I don't think the last, or that last season, I don't think enough people died. That's what I heard everybody complaining about. <laughs> they needed more deaths. Good opinion. They Good needed opinion. more deaths. I'll throw something out there, give you something to work right. with. Have you ever seen it? I had not even a little Yeah, more. see, we can't. Should. I mean, I'm... Don't. It seems it, too long. Yes. Um, <laughs> well, your parents binged it in two weeks. I don't... Like, have, that, listen, was, that was the most incredible thing I'd ever heard... Because I thought I had binged it, and it took me, like, three months. they get home from work, they would sit down, and they would watch until, like, 1 in the morning, and then they go to bed, work, get home, watch it till 1. Like, like that's all they did. It, it I is, can't do that. It is like, so I, addicting, um, watching it. And, you know, it, it does such a good job of leaving on a cliffhanger. And, um, like, it's just uninterrupted. And the last season, they were basically hour and a half movies. Yeah. Like, that's how they directed it. And so every episode was an hour and a half to two hour movies, basically. Like, it, it, it was incredible. And uh, I mean, yeah. That's all I have to say. Just great. It, I, no, you shouldn't watch it. This You shouldn't watch it. For the simple point of how you mentioned last week, uh, World of Warcraft. World of Warcraft. You'll get addicted to it? You'll get addicted to it. And you'll watch it all. I would. Because once you start, you can't stop. They should remake the last season after the book is written off of what happens. I think a lot of people were talking about that. And a lot... Cause, because they they left out so many things that like George R.R. Martin has put in there. And then, you know, they're like... There was uh, in an interview, and it's a famous like meme now, of them saying, Oh, yeah, we kind of just forgot about that. Like, important stuff <laughs> yeah. Yeah. that like they just never addressed. And so... But... I love the show. It's incredible. And I think they do, they might be planning on doing something like a remake in the future. But they got that spinoff coming. Yeah, which all, yeah, which could be really exciting and that's supposed to be like pre all the Game of Thrones stuff. But anyways, that's our cream of the crop. Honorable mentions. Ooh. Yeah, but I was just going to say, oh. just say, oh, those are our cream of the crops. Yep, we're going to be yeah. posting oh, those oh. so you guys uh, vote on who you think had the best cream of the crop, who you had the best TV shows, or who you thought had the best arguments. And now we're just going to get in some honorable mentions. Um, I guess I can start, because one of mine was already taken. Um, that was Stranger Things. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. I kind of touched on that. The second one, um, I had I, I had prefaced, but I didn't say, and or I had alluded to, and it's The Office. Um, like, I, I've watched about all of these. I haven't watched How I Met Your Mother in its entirety. I've watched a few episodes, and it hasn't drawn me in. And I just haven't given it enough time. I'm sure if I did, you gotta watch from the beginning. I That's would, one. Well, no, I did. I did, and it, like the first four or five episodes, and it, I don't think I gave it enough time. Like you said, you watched the f full first episode. It, it didn't necessarily draw me in, and I think that was maybe because I was probably too focused on potentially Game of Thrones or some some other show that I was watching. So and I'm sure if I did, then I, I would like it a you lot. Would, yeah, I think so. Um, but I, I've watched. The Office, Arrested Development, New Girl, Parks and Rec, um, a little bit of How I Met Your Mother, but not much. Um, I feel like there might be some other comedy shows. What about and, uh, Always Sunny? Yeah. I was shocked it wasn't on your list. Uh, and and all, It's Always Sunny. Always Sunny is so funny. and um, But it, it, it can get bad sometimes, and it's not really well. And it looks like it's recorded on an iPhone 
camera. Like, <laughs> it, it, but it is super funny and it's hilarious. But um, I think Arrested Development oversees The Office, and I think The Office. I mean, it is so funny. It is so good. Um, I, I people will die in a hill for it, and I can sort of see why. I think it is uh, like of the ones that I've watched. Um, I, I think it is all like the second funniest, and sometimes it it's probably does surpass Arrested Development. Um, but it sort of the end when Michael leaves, it does drop off a lot. Um, but yeah, and then my third is Hell's Kitchen. Ooh. I watch that show a lot. I love it. I I love cooking shows. Um, it's one of the best cooking shows. Gordon Ramsay, we all know him. We all love him. His outbursts. He gets super mad at overcooked meat. Like. Mm -hmm grow up dude but it's so funny to watch putting a bread on a woman's face and calling her an idiot sandwich like come on Good and like bringing in a bunch of people to run his restaurant he's gonna get super mad it's super fun very very easy tv to watch and it's a competition so it's one of those game shows so super super good easy watch um and you kind of get attached to some people so yeah those are my honorable mentions <clears throat> my honorable Honorable mentions, I could say at that time. Um, first one, obviously, the one that you're probably waiting for was Monk. Monk just couldn't make the list. Um, it, it was on my personal top five, mm. but I didn't want to put it in the. Uh, I didn't want to put it in the overall top five, but I mean, if you haven't seen it, it's such a great show. And then it's another one where like they kind of build it from the beginning to the end. Even if you just watched the last season and know that. All seven seasons before it were building up to, like, the only crime in the whole thing is his wife's... The only crime he can't solve is his wife's car bombing murder. And he ends up... Yeah, I'm no spoilers, but, like, just watch that last season. Mm -hmm. And then watch everything that, like... Like, little tidbits before when, like, he sees the guy that made the bomb. And he finds him and he's like, turns off his thing and turns it back on. Dude, it's just so good. And then that last... Those last two episodes are, like, a two-parter. Oh, man. I mean, just watch the last two episodes, actually. That's all you need to watch. And then you'll be like, oh, that's a good show. Uh, White Collar was the other one. Um, again, just watch the first season. That's all you need. And it's a great show. Um, another one that just gets you with twists and turns every, every single episode. And then finally, um, I went with Family Feud. Another quick, easy watch. <laughs> another, <laughs> another one that you can just sit there and be like, yeah. What? <laughs> what? Family Feud. D oh, okay, I had to put some game show on there because I watch a lot of game shows, mm. and Family Feud's the best game show to watch. Respect it. Can't, can't, can't not like Family Feud. Jeopardy. So, nah, I'm not family. I know this is funny because I said last time, or I said yesterday, that I only like to do three honorable mentions. Well, I threw a fourth in there. Oh! <laughs> God, I couldn't pick. But, um, so my first one, you guys all went like this idea of like just quick easy watches. I went with one too. Fixer Upper, Chip and Joanna Gaines. They always mm. making some magic out of some houses. A dogs. HGTV. That's you the can't best. go wrong. <laughs> that was the best. It really is. Absolutely. I'm, you could watch anything on there, and it's amazing. Me and Kelsey just started watching Flea Market Flip. Start my favorite show now. Oh, dude. It's so fun. Wasn't I, literally wasn't even on your list. So you stop. There was one. There's a one. It's too early. It's too early. There's one that was like uh, Renovation Island. That one's fun to watch. They like bought like a private island and make it swoop. But yeah, that HGTV, great. Yep. Fixer Upper was my choice though, because I love Chip and Joanna. Good. This one actually should have been on my top five, but it's way too early. Uh, is Otter Banks? Mm. I'm a huge Otter Banks. Guy. I thought it would be on your top five. Uh, it it could have. It's probably going to be, but it's just too early right now. Yes. Um, it's a great show. When season two came out, like I think it was like a month ago or so, I was in Missouri with Megan and it was tough for me and Megan to leave the room because we would just keep watching the show but no it's a great it's it's great through two seasons it's a must watch I'd say um, and I'm not a big fan of like the like the hype of like squid games or like oh you gotta watch this new like I mm -hmm. that one I am though I'm a huge Outer Banks fan uh, third I went with a million little things um, it's currently on TV so that's why it's an honorable mention but they do a really nice job of like talking about real world pro problems that's the guy that kills himself like mm -hmm. yeah. yeah they do a really good job about like making a great story between a group of friends that like go through struggles mm -hmm. and go through like real life like their new season that just is just came out like they took the pandemic and covid 
and then like all the things that happened within that time period and they made it into the show and it was really awesome to watch I thought they were really good great characters to like love on and hate like it's a good show um, and then finally I went with Imposters this one Among Us? no Imposters oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> you're sus? over my head <laughs> uh, this show is ap- is amazing it would be in my top five if there was more content they only have two seasons and this is the one where it's like there's it's there like just do it just put it back out there like, mm-hmm. you need it uh but yeah uh, have you guys ever seen it nope nope um, heard of it. yeah it's a it's a good lot watch it's on uh netflix it's actually about so there's these three people one of them is actually i want to say it's is it vanessa hudgens Oh yeah. I don't know. Oh, oh, were you googling that? Oh, you want me to? I thought you were. I didn't mean oh, to. Oh, like, I I want to say it's Vanessa screen. Hudgens. I really do. I think. Oh, I I think it's Vanessa Hudgens is the main mm-hmm. character. But what she does is uh, she marries these guys. She marries two of these guys, two guys, and then there was a girl. But they're all. Uh, she goes under a different name. <laughs> and, uh, what is it? Her. Uh, it's a woman named Maddie. Yeah, Maddie. Um, her name is. In Bar La Vie. Oh, it's not Vanessa Hudgens? What she looks like? <laughs> no, it's nope. not. Well, I thought so. I'm a big high school musical guy. Okay, come on. Yeah. But no, she. what she does is she marries these people, and then they're married for 30 days, and then she takes all of her money, all of their money, and all of their, like, whatever, belongings, and then leaves them. Mm. And, like, she changes their identity and everything. And he, there's, like, a three-people mastermind who all ran by one guy. And oh. then... The three of the people, like, that she marries, like, we're like, well, we're not going to let you leave like that. Like, and then they all group up and they try to stop her. And, yeah. Hmm, interesting. It is a really good show. It's quick because it's only two two seasons. I recommend watching it, but it's you're going to be pretty upset because it ends and then it's just over. Mm. Yeah, so, so I'm going to wait for more to come out and then I'll No, there, there is no more. Like, what? it's done. Like, oh. that's why it's not on my list. Like, it would be on my list. Oh, guys. okay. Then I'm just not going to watch it. Yeah, I would. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so your a few of your picks have like been shows with life lessons and uh-huh. they have you know good little tidbits of stories and things like that. You should watch Curb Your Enthusiasm. Oh, that's what you were looking up. Yeah, yeah, it's I, a good I, show. I, I've never seen it. Um, it <laughs> just yeah, just watch Curb just, Your Enthusiasm. Don't if, you, if you want life lessons, watch. It, it has one in every single episode. Right. It's literally Curb Your Enthusiasm built around life lessons. <laughs> You'll love it. Okay, I'll, I'll give it a. I'll give it a go. All right. All right. And All right. Hey, quality creams. Yeah, we did great for the crop today. Absolutely, that was a good harvest. Absolutely. Bingo. <laughs> well, all right. We are gonna go into a brand new segment. Uh oh. Oh, this week, and that is Logan's Ooh. brain food. So this is just going to be a trivia segment. Um, I'm going to be the trivia master. And I'm going to be sort of giving these guys some trivia questions. And it's, and it's not going to be any specific format, any specific question. They're going to be random styled. So the one I do today is not going to be the one I do next time and things like that. And we can keep a running tally if we want and see who does better. Or um, What's only if one you, question? If you guys can't get it right, you know, we can maybe add it to uh, the comments and make uh, have is the it like a section. back and forth? Or yeah, are we like competing pausing? or is it just? Oh, you'll see. So okay. yeah, here we go. Yeah, I'm not very smart. Well, th- that's <laughs> we the thing. So, that. <laughs> some weeks it might be just a question, and or it might be like this. Some weeks, okay. This, this format I have here, and that's what I'm, and that's what I was trying to, trying to let them know is so that wait, it's not going like to be buzzing in or no, 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 no. I'm waiting. Okay, so your theme today. There's a theme to these. To this question, these questions, it's going to be geography. I'm oh. so good with we geography. We're throwing oh, geography out here. Yep. All right, so what I have in front of me yep. is the top 25 largest countries by area. Yep. Okay. And we're going to go back and forth. Stop. That's no, no googling. I can't like type stuff. No. Why would you be able to type stuff? Okay, keep going. I thought it was like you have to name a country, and if it's on the list, you survive. I, I have it. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly it. So we're going to do five rounds. It's basically the winner is whoever can guess the most on the list through five rounds. Okay? Okay. And gotcha. if you guys, that makes more sense. So you're, it's going to be Skip, and then Sam, and then Skip. It's going to go back and forth, and through five rounds, so ten picks, whoever has the most wins. If you guys are tied, 
We go into a sudden death. You just keep going until someone misses. Hey, I'm not letting him go. And this first. is largest. We got rock paper scissors just for some. Largest by area. by area, not by population. All right, easy. Best We're gonna do three. rock paper best scissors best, best, best two out of three. three. Good podcasting. I'll skip throws paper. He wins first game. Sam throws scissors. He wins second game. Both paper. Both rock. Skip with a scissor. Mm. Sam's paper. Oh. Skip mm. gets mm. to pick. Mm. Mm. I'm gonna go with it. Oh. Before you start, this is excluding the United States. Excluding. So no U.S. Yep. Top 25 outside of the United States. Okay. Well, I'm going to take uh, the motherland. I'm going with Russia. That is on there. Do you want me to tell you the numbers as well? Yeah. Russia's number one. I figured. Who would have thought? Hang on. That, that kind of eliminates my guess because I think that's number one. What's yours? Antarctica. <laughs> Sam, that is wrong. What? Antarctica is not a country, my that guy. It is a continent. Same thing. Guys, if I lose this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is not how I thought this was going to go. Skip. Number two, I'm going with Canada. Canada is number two. Tough. Look at a map. Just imagine a map in your head. <laughs> wow, okay. This is not how I thought this would go. Uh, yep. <laughs> oh, man. Now I'm, now I'm second guessing. Maybe I'm. The, should I just say it? Yeah. I don't know if I want to. Top 25 seems like a lot of countries. It's about a fourth of the countries. Or not, no, no it's about an eighth of the countries. Oh, really? Mexico. Mexico is on there. It's number 14. Good job. Two to one. That was mm. not what I was going to say. But... I'm going to go with uh, China. China's number three. Skip <laughs> went one, two, three. Same went zero to 14. Rough. All right, skip with three. I, I don't want to say it because I don't Just keep going. I love it. <laughs> Just don't name continents, please. Uh, Brazil. That's a good one. Brazil four, is right? number five. Well, five. USA Ooh. is number four. Ah, okay. That Brazil's number five. That, that is right. Three to two. Okay. I'm going to take Sam's strategy and name a, con or a continent here. Even though it's technically not a continent, I'm going with Australia. Australia's number six. Four Dude, to five. I four was going to gonna say Australia, but then I didn't want to be wrong and say a continent. I think it's yet. technically Oceania. But I'm going with, I call it Australia. Four, four to two. Mm -hmm. Tough. Hate to see it. Greenland? Greenland is number 12. Four to three. Right. Skip for the win here. For the win, I mean, I'm just trying to think. Like, I'm, I'm thinking India. Is that your guess? Yeah. India is number seven. Skip. <laughs> That's five for five. Skip went one, two, three. <sighs> Sam went five. Six, seven. One, two, and three. He went six, seven. Dude, I mean that's Sam. Just... You can add another one for the record books just to uh, just so it's. I mean, hey, I... So, so it's. Uh, How is Antarctica not a country? Five or four. That's some. Point. Nobody owns that land. Penguins do. Mm, there you go. Good yeah. Point. Penguins. Sam, you wanna you wanna Come you wanna on. make it a, a a five to four or a swallow your pride and leave it three to five. My next three would be. Oh, wait, here you, you go. go. You go. Uh, well, I said Greenland already, right? Mm -hmm. So Iceland. Iceland is like. That's incorrect. <laughs> Iceland is. Iceland's, Iceland's tiny, tiny, very small, tiny, very tiny. Oh. Um, tiny. I would have said Germany, France, and Spain would have been my next. Spain group. was one of mine. Uh, the... Um, all not on there. All not on there. Wow. So maybe yes. Yeah, es no, Estonia's. Okay, go through twenty-five up. Okay, so 26, because we're leaving out the USA, which we're yep. included, is Colombia, South America. It's wow, that's bigger than Germany, France, and Spain? Colombia's big. Yeah, I guess, yeah. 25. Chile's probably pretty big. It's long. Because I'm pretty is devastated right now. South Africa. Yep, okay. 24 is Mali. 23 is Angola. That's a good song. Um, 22 is Niger. 21, Chad. 20, Peru. 19, Mongolia, 18, Iran, 17, Libya, 16, Sudan. A lot of uh, Western Asian countries. Um, Indonesia, 14, Mexico, 13, Saudi Arabia. Oops, I have that. Okay. Uh, 12, Greenland. 11, Dominican Republic of Congo. 10, Algeria. 9, Kazakhstan. 8, Argentina. India, Australia, Brazil, USA, China, Canada, Russia. See, here's my mistake. is I'm looking at a European map, mm. and Germany, Spain, and France all biggest? look huge, Absolutely. but Europe is such a small 
Yep. Con- it was a lot of Yeah, countries. a lot of it was Africa yeah, and Yeah, that Western makes Asia. sense, yeah. And South America. Hey, at least I didn't have to get there, because, you know. I... So, so I was going to do seven rounds, um, except you guys were like, oh, I don't really know anything, so. Dude, I what do you like, mean? I, I was like, killed it. I was like, okay, I'll go to five. If you... I'm not very good in the... I mean, I don't know. I'm decent with world like geography, but United States geography, I don't know. Nailed it. So like, I, I, took capitals. A, I took a class. It was called um, International Business. And our teacher made us know... Uh, she made us do map quizzes of like the US and then South America, Europe, Asia, and all that stuff, and um, Africa. And at the end of the year for our final exam, we had to do every single country. Mm. Never missed a single one. Hey, so there was at one point in time, like two years ago, where I knew where every single country was on the map. And I still have a really good, good idea. Yeah. Um, Africa, I've completely thrown out the window, except, you know, a few of them. But I would say Europe, and I know South America, Europe, and Asia, I think I would, I would pr- probably ace it. Uh, shout out uh, Drew Danil. He's a YouTuber. I watch him every day, and he just does map stuff. That's whack. So that's how I had to do There you go. It. Well, there Skip. There was some conspiring there. <laughs> well, Skip was this week's winner of Logan's Brain Food. I'm literally the smartest on the set. Like, what does that mean to you? Oh my, is there anything under that bullet? That okay. Said, I'll now be we're back. gonna get into the I'll thing. Be back. Now we're gonna get into the <laughs> thing where I'm not the smartest on the set. Actually. Yeah. <laughs> so now we have we're going into NFL charcuterie. Um, that is our mm. weekly football picking, and um, let's go ahead and go into some results of last week. Mm. So last week we had Skippy Hear that? went one for five, which four four one for five. No one one of Five. One oh, and four. I thought you went, oh, okay. One and four. Yeah. One I'm, out of five. Yeah. 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 Uh, he went one and five. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Which is almost as impressive as Sam Come went on. four out of five. We literally did the same thing. Come on. Yeah, it's just as impressive to miss all those games as it is to, to win all those games. Um, Put me up, baby. And I'm sitting at three. So I guessed three right last week. Skip guessed one and Sam guessed four. So he is at a lead right now. And the problem is the one I got right is the one that we all agreed on. Yep. So. The only one he got right was the one, the uh, Chargers Browns. We all picked the Chargers. Let's go. Um, so, yeah, just to sort of um, sum up what this segment is, for those of you who don't know, this is just a weekly um, pick em. We We pick five games in the NFL that we think are going to be 50-50. And then... Um, you know, we, we, we pick our reasons why, and at the end of the week, we see who got the most, and um, at the end of the season, there's going to be a punishment for the total loser. So, Skip, you are the front runner to, uh, to, doing, to, to doing something for Sam at this point, if this, if this record keeps up. Good. All <laughs> right. Want to run down the games? I'll Let's, do the games I haven't written down this week. <laughs> All <laughs> right. Let's do it. Right. Run them down. We got... Uh, the Miami Dolphins against the Jacksonville Jaguars, but not in Florida. It's going to be taking place overseas in London. Mm. We got the Carolina Panthers versus the Minnesota Vikings. We got the uh, Baltimore Ravens against the Los Angeles Chargers. We got the Indianapolis Colts versus the Houston Texans. And we got the Cleveland Browns versus the Arizona Cardinals. Mm. Very nice, very nice. Solid five games. I think Um, so. It's a good spread. I'll start, and we'll go... Yeah. Okay. My throw for the first game... Uh, Miami versus the Jags. I am taking, for the sole fact that the game is happening in London, the Jacksonville Jaguars. Um, I believe that the Jags, I mean, it's basically a home game for them because they've played, I researched, guys. Oh, wow. I did, after going one in five, you know, I had to actually put some <laughs> thought into this. So I did some research. The Jags have played seven games in London, which is more than any other team. Um, Dolphins played four games there, so I mean, still a good amount, but they went one and three. They've only won one game in London, mm-hmm. and guess what? I'm going to take the Jags. Uh, additionally, they also, Dolphins don't have a quarterback, <laughs> so that's a pretty Percent key did thing. did get hurt, did he? Yeah, they don't, yeah. Even, they don't even have a backup. Reed Simnet, whatever his name is. His name's Reed. There's no good quarterback named Reed. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm going to take the Jags. 
Logan? Um, I'm going to agree with you. I think this is going to be Trevor Lawrence's first dub. Um, going to be his first win of his NFL career. The Dolphins, yeah. You just you just can't win on your third-string quarterback. Mm -hmm. Doesn't I mean, happen. Tua, Brissett, out. Yeah. Um, I, I, I love the point you made about a guy named Reed. Can't be yeah, a not, not a quarterback. Literally um, not a quarterback. Also, game. the Dolphins have other people. Will Fuller's out. Um, they're just missing a lot of things. And I think Urban Meyer... Um, he needs you know he's gonna one. he's gonna be grinding on some some uh, some up. London girls. Oh. So uh, <laughs> he's gonna be partying. He's gonna be oh, fired okay. up. Yeah. Oh. He is. <laughs> um. To go off of the, what you I mean with that, I think what the Dolphins need to do is make a trade for Dawson Knox. Put him at quarterback. That's a quarterback name. That is a quarterback That's name, a, dude, baby. They would win the Super Bowl. I don't know why he's Dolphins. that tight end. He should be the quarterback. He should be the, the for the for the Josh for the Allen. He should be like. The tight end. That's or, a tight end. Yeah, that's no. a tight end. Put, <laughs> dude, Dawson Knox, mark it now. He's going to be the starting quarterback for the Dolphins. Let's go, seven. Dawson Josh Allen Knox, really baby. is a, just a wide receiver name. Yeah. Like, <laughs> or, I mean. Just the blandest name. He could no, be I a mean, DN. A, I mean. A DN. Name. Your quarterback's name either needs to be super bland or super, like, Dawson Knox. Like. Dawson Knox, dude. That's the best name in the NFL. All right, by Sam. Far. I'm going Jags as well. Mm. Urban mm. needs this All one, agree. Man. He just needs. Nice. He really does. <laughs> yeah, so does Lawrence. I think they're gonna. I think they, they're gonna be, not beaten anymore. Yeah. Yeah, they're gonna win a game. Go. Before the Lions. Oh no, we're losing. <laughs> yeah, we're losing this week. The Bengals are, are good. And then uh, Burrow just had to swallow. Joe Burrow his. can't breathe, so. Well, he's gonna be fine. He said, <laughs> and he has to swallow that loss when his kicker missed the extra point start or the the field goal and started cheering. Swallow. Two field goals. Yeah, he can't really swallow much. It still hurts. Can't swallow the loss. He actually, he's actually, his body is not allowing him to swallow that loss. <laughs> so I would actually be scared if I had a line. Yes. Vite line. His body literally cannot well swallow aware. the loss. All right, yeah. Logan, do you want to go with the next game? All right, the next game, uh, Vikings versus Panthers. I'm going to be taking the good old Minnesota Skull Vikings, baby. Uh, Kirk Cousins is an animal. He's an absolute dog. Um, I'm not going to give any reasons. I know it's uh, still pretty raw and for some of our people here. But Kirk's good. They should have lost. They got a good kicker, I'd say. Um, also, the they almost lost to the Lions. The Lions are a quality the, football The Lions team. have had really close games with people. Yes. The Ravens. They almost they had a, lost to the Lions. The Lions defense, I literally am watching a high school football team. <laughs> play defense. They I, bite kneecaps, Sam. Yeah. Okay, so they're rabid high school defense, and I don't know what to tell you. They're, they're not good. The Lions have the worst roster in the NFL. Okay, we're not talking about the Lions. We're talking about the Vikings. Yeah, we're talking about Who the Vikings. Taking in this game? And uh, the, oh, okay. Well, also, the Panthers are struggling, and they mm -hmm. still don't have their best players, mm -hmm. defense or offense. And the Vikings have a ton of weapons, way more than the Panthers. Kirk, uh, Jefferson, uh, Osborne, Thielen, Cook. I think the I think the Vikings take this, and I I'll, like I said last week. I think the Panthers are pretty pretty smoking mirrors. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to keep on the Panthers hype train. They let me down last week, but I think they're going to get the dub this week. Sam Darnold's going to bounce back. Uh, yeah, he didn't have the greatest game last mm -hmm. week against the Eagles. I mean, they almost beat the Eagles. Still, they should have. Eagles he just, are bad. Eagles are bad, bad. He just took a couple chances late in the games, and he threw a couple interceptions. But this week, they'll probably have Stephon Gilmore to be back there. Uh, they just traded for him. Uh, I think and Chubba Hubbard ran like an animal against the Eagles. Mm -hmm. uh, it was the Eagles, though. That's true. It was the Eagles. But the Vikings <laughs> also played against the Lions. So was the Lions. You're right. You're right. You're right. But I'm going with the Panthers. I think Sam Darnold's actually a pretty solid quarterback. So Sam, thank you for not jumping off the train because I'm driving this train. I hate... How, like, if, if for a team or for a quarterback or for anyone in the NFL, it takes, I think, three good games to be considered good. Like, if you have, if a quarterback has three good games in a row, pe that's when people start looking at him and be like, hey, that guy's playing really good. All it takes is one bad game for everyone to jump off the train. Mm -hmm. All it takes is one bad game. He had his one bad game. Mm -hmm. I mean, before this game, everyone's like, Sam Darnold's so good, he's so great, he's so great. And then as soon as he has this one bad game, everyone's off. Yeah. I'm not jumping. I'm sticking with Sam Darnold. I mean, again, they don't have McCaffrey. They don't have a lot of great players. But um, I think they still have enough. And I think the Vikings are so, like, 
I just don't think they're they're hit or miss. Great. They, that, that's the, I was looking for a better way to say it, but I think that's the only way to say it is they are hit or miss. They're either going to be really good coming out or they're going to be really bad. It just matters what Viking team. I mean, it also it also depends if Dalvin Cook plays. If Dalvin Cook that's, plays, that's pretty that's a difference because he's a, an elite running back. I mean, not saying Alex Madsen's not good, but he had that. He's not Dalvin Cook. He's not Dalvin Cook, and he had that costly fumble at the end of the Lions game too that almost cost him the game. Like, I don't know. I don't. I don't think the Vikings are as good. I mean, the whole NFC North, I don't think, is as good as everybody thinks they are. So. Mm. Okay, yeah, I agree with you. I'm going. Uh, I'm going Panthers. Yep. Sam, next game. We got the Chargers and the Ravens. And this kind of sucks because for me, both of these two teams, I really do enjoy watching them play football. Okay. I love both of them. Well, it's gonna be a fun game then. Yeah, it, it will be fun. But I'm gonna go with Herbert. I, I'm a big Herbert guy this year. Um, I and then then I also thought the Ravens looked bad on Monday Night Football, even though they made it close, made a comeback, went to overtime. Um, but I think the Chargers are just too too much on defense. On uh, they have Mike Williams, and then you have Keenan Allen, who's an elite receiver. Uh, then you throw in um, the who's their backup uh, tight end? They just got he scored in the last two games. Parnam, I think his name is Parnam Jr. He scored twice now, and he's making plays. Eckler's an elite running back. Their defense is good. The Chargers are going to be a scary team. Like come down the stretch, like they. I don't think they're gonna lose a lot of games in the near future. Yeah, um, Sam, I really don't want to agree with you on every pick, but I'm going to agree with you on this pick as well. So that's three in a row. Yeah, I really like the Chargers. I don't know if this is good for you or bad for you. Yeah, bad that, for me. That, I'm I'm liking. We're on the I'm either, ends of the I'm spectrum, either jumping dude. up with you or dragging you down with me. <laughs> so I'm I'm okay with no matter what happens here. But yeah, I'm going with the Chargers. Um, basically, I mean, I'm just going to agree with everything you said. Herbert, <laughs> Herbert's that He's good. He's the man, dude. Herbert is that man. Herbert is good. Yep. And, I take that as you're disagreeing. Um, I did watch the Chargers play the Browns, and I did watch the Chargers be electric. They were. I did watch them almost <laughs> lose to the Browns. But, so, I, I'm going to, I'm going to start by saying I'm picking the Ravens only on one thing, and then I... It's not because of things I've watched. It's not because of any any data or anything. It's just I have a weird gut feeling, and I'm gonna go with it. Hey, and maybe I'm shooting gut. myself. And, and like you said, that might be a good thing for me that I'm disagreeing with Skip so I know. much. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, <laughs> and Shy guy? so I'm picking the Ravens, and so I kind of had to try to force myself to like. I was just like, I'm just gonna pick the Ravens because I mean, I, I watch the Chargers. They're really, really good. Um, so, so I kind of had to force myself to come up with some reasons why. And, um, I think the receivers on both sides match up pretty well. Um, I think they're, Marquise Brown's pretty solid. I mean, he has some drops, but Sammy Watkins as well. Um, I think I would probably give the edge to the Chargers, but I still think, I mean, I, I don't think, like, last week, the Chargers, uh, receivers are way better than the Browns receivers, and I think that was really the, the difference. Um, but... One thing I did note in that Chargers game is they couldn't stop the run versus Hunt and Chubb. Mm -hmm. Like, they ran all over him. And granted, they probably are the best backfield in the NFL with those two combined. But I don't know about you guys, but when I think of one player that is probably the most dangerous when they get on the run and they, they move their feet, Sam Darnold. Lamar Jackson. Baker Mayfield? Oh. He's dangerous. Well, doesn't Sam Darnold have the most rushing touchdowns? Lamar. He does. Yeah, so he does. Sam Darnold, yeah. that's the guy. You didn't I don't know pick who you're thinking. Panthers, so well, I think it's, uh, well, I'm not going strictly on rushing touchdowns. <laughs> I just, whoever's the most dangerous on their feet, and I think that's Lamar. And um, I mean, they are on a, like, a carousel of running backs down there. So that could, uh, he, he could be a difference maker. I don't know. But I'm going to go with the Ravens, and I'm feeling better about it now because you. <laughs> hey, you didn't pick them. The Colts lost. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I know. They lost in overtime. To the Ravens. Yeah. They they can play from behind. Wow. Yeah. Hey, didn't see that one coming. <laughs> they won in overtime. Hey, we're recording this during Monday Night Football. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was about to change my pick because the Ravens did look pretty bad. <laughs> we came down here and the Ravens were getting crushed. It was no, it was twenty two seventeen. Pat McAfee's probably not happy. <laughs> I would assume not. Yeah. 
So, yeah. Okay, well. Texans, Colts? Yes, sir. What do you got? I'm taking, maybe I shouldn't now, but I'm taking the Indianapolis Colts. Actually, no. Take it with your team? I'm taking the Indianapolis Colts. Yeah. Because. Take it with your chest. Texans are, yeah. str Texans are struggling. Yeah, let them know. And the Colts have a QB that legitimately has two broken ankles and is playing in a wheelchair. Carson Wentz. But that doesn't matter. Take, put, throw everything away. I need you to look at me for this. Because this, this is a hill I will, this is how I will stand on. The winner of this game, there's an edge in a football game. And there's one position that if your position is better than the other team, you are going to win, and that's going to set you above. And that position is the backup quarterback position. And it. let me tell you what. I'll what, leave when, when, It is such a mind game when the other team knows that the people that they're playing aren't even playing their best Player. Oh, it's Sam Ellinger. <laughs> yeah, it is. Jesus yeah, Lord. Like, <laughs> like, oh. it, 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 it's like it's like dangling food in front of your in front of your prey. Like playing playing with your food. You know they they're not even playing their best player. That's like if and, me and Logan play tennis and he's playing with his left hand, and like yeah, I know all exactly. he has to do is it's, switch his hands. It's a mind game, and I'm still beating. <laughs> and we're still competing, and you and, and that and that's it. And not even that is the backup quarterback is such a role that. You know, they're not a captain because they don't want that responsibility. They're not flashy, but they're a morale booster. And, you know, they, they'll, they'll get the job done. And, and that's what really separates teams yep. for winning. And I'm going to tell you what, there's no doubt in my mind, 100% fact, that Sam Ellinger is a better backup quarterback than Jeff Driscoll. Oh, I disagree. Jeff Driscoll is pretty good for the did Lions. Did he play for the Lions? Yeah, yeah, yeah I was going to say. Yeah, he did last year, baby. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, really good. Hey, we Last disagree. Year. I'm going Jeff Driscoll. <laughs> yeah. Sam, what you got? Um, Thank you for my TED Talk. Hey! I I mean, I'm going to the Colts. Uh, these are actually two teams that I have not watched, like, any games on. Like, either two teams. Like, I have not watched them play, no matter what. But I've seen highlights and whatever. I don't like Carson Wentz. I don't think he's very good. But I don't think Mills is very good either. So, <laughs> uh... I think they're the. I think Wentz gets the edge there. Uh, I think the Colts has a really good defense though with Darius Leonard. Um, so I'm I'm going with the Colts. Guys, I don't want to switch my pick. Or I want to switch my picks. So that way we're not all agreeing. But I don't see how the Texans win. And I say that now, which means the Texans probably will win. Mm. I'm gonna go with what I have written down. I'm sticking with the Colts. I mean, I I'm already down. I should probably like try and you know do something different to yeah. nudge above you, but I also don't want to go down even more, and I don't see the Texans win. So I'm just going with the Colts. <laughs> yeah, I mean you guys said it. I mean, mainly, I, honestly, it's only because of Sam Ellinger. That's that's right. That's the only reason. I'm Your TED Talk me. persuaded us. Yeah, that's you right. got me sold. That's right. <laughs> right last game, Sam. Cardinals, the Browns. Browns. This one is going to be fun to watch. I think it's going to be like you said you watched the Chargers and they looked electric. I think this game's going to just be full of two dangerous quarterbacks going right at it. And it depends think, how he wakes up. I think the one that woke up dangerous is coming out on top. And that's Baker. Mm. I'm going with the Browns here. I think the Browns are a really, really good team on defense. And I think they're going to get healthier. I think Desmond Ward. Or Des, yeah, Des, Denzel, Ward, Denzel Ward. My bad. Denzel Ward was out for the rest of that Chargers game, which mm -hmm. kind of hurt them. Greedy Williams was also injured. But <clears throat> I think they're going to come out. I think they're going to play really hard because that, that sucked to lose the way they did against the Chargers. Um, and I think the Cardinals, they looked they looked like they were due for a loss against the Niners last I mean, week. Quality football team, I'd say. But, uh, yeah, I think... I think this is going to be a close game. It could really go either way. I'm okay with getting my this pick wrong, but I'm going with the Browns because I think that they're going to bounce back. All right. Too good of a team not to. I'm glad that you went Browns so we don't go the same all the way through because I originally had the Browns written down because I don't see the Browns losing two games in a row. I, 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 see, I, I just can't see the Browns doing that. But... There's one reason and one reason only that I'm going with the Cardinals. And that is because if you look at the Cardinals' win-loss record 
There is a zero in the loss record. And I am under the firm belief, I, I, it, it might be, I'm picking the Jags and they have a zero in the win record, <laughs> but I feel like they're capable of winning games. Until the Cardinals prove to me that they can lose a football game, you gotta pick them. they're not going to lose a football game. Until they lose a game, the Cardinals are not going to lose a game. So I'm taking the Cardinals until yeah. they lose. Uh, Cardinals by, probably by like seven. I was going to say by 20, but probably by like seven. Like, no, they'll win. But yeah, I'm taking the Cardinals in this one. Um, just because they haven't lost yet, and I don't think they will. Well, Skip, you know what they say about streaks? Yeah. They're meant to be broken. Yes, sir. Uh, and I am going with the Cleveland Browns. Yes, sir. Because the Cardinals, I watched them against San Francisco. Yep. Solid defense. Solid defense. First one they kind of went after all year, yep. and um, they struggled oh. offensively <laughs> pretty bad. Um, and and I, I, think, I think the Cardinals have – they don't have flashy receivers. They have solid receivers, but – they really aren't – I'm nervous to pick them. I don't think – I think the Browns are going to beat them so bad. I, I really do. Like, they have Rondell Moore who – yeah, he's electric, but he's young. And they don't – they barely throw it to him. Mm -hmm. Like, they have A.J. Green who's super old. D-hop. Yeah, and yeah. he's also pretty old, but he okay. He is going to be their better receiver. D-hop's ridiculous. He's get, he catches every ball that gets thrown. <laughs> every ball. I think Kyler Murray is really, really good. Um, but again, Hunt and Chubb, they're oh, yeah. almost unstoppable. And let, I, it's, I'm going back to last week. They struggled to score when they were up against a solid defense. I don't know how they're going to do it this week. And the Browns, while, while they don't have very good receivers, I think Hunt and Chubb are, are going to be solid. And they're going to score points. And... I mean, I just I also like how you mentioned that you couldn't see the Browns ever losing two games in a row mm -hmm. when they're they went like one in sixteen. Or I, I know I'm saying I don't see this Browns team <laughs> right, like, losing two games. But in a row. that is a very Browns, this is a much that, that different... could be a very Brown that is a very Browns thing to do though. Yeah, like fumble at the end of the end zone um, mm -hmm. to go. Are you, know, you just gonna? Just say Lions, all right? They did that, too. It's just a bad team. <laughs> so I'm going with the Browns as well. The, I, Car the Cardinals, until they can prove to me, like, uh, I'm... What, what do they have? They have yeah, five wins. Five and oh. <laughs> Kyler's hurt. That's another reason why. he's His shoulder's messed up. Well, That's... the problem with me is I have Kyler and I have Rondell Moore in mm, fantasy. Yep. And uh, Kyler was really, 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 really good, like, the first three weeks. Um, he has dropped off significantly. And Rondell Moore had one good game. Not and the, they don't... Nah, he's... Uh, he dropped off last week. Last week he dropped off. I don't think he yeah, dropped off the week before. Well, he did. I mean, compared, he was like 30, 30, 28, and then like 21, and then like 15. He didn't have a very good week. Which, it, which is like a slow decline, which could be him getting hurt. But I that's, have that's, that's I to, need to check that's, I, that's, to my, will, that's to my That's to my point. I will tell you guys your biggest mistake here. And it's something that, I mean, I can't blame you. A lot of people are going to fall for it. Um, when you are judging college football games, you have to judge divisional matchups different. Because these coaches, the staffs, and the players, they know each other too well that those games are just going to be closer. Mm -hmm. And they're going to be harder games. They're going to be harder games to win. So I think if they were playing, I mean, they played the Niners. They're in the same division. No matter how good or how bad one of them are, and I, I mean, the Niners aren't a bad team. You guys are acting like the Niners are, like, a terrible team. Yeah, Jimmy G was out, but uh, their defense is still top 10 in the league. And so it's a quality defense and a divisional matchup. That's going to be a tough game for them to win. If it was anybody else, they probably would have blew them out of the water. It's just... Well, that's why I'm picking them is because it was a solid defense and a not very good. Who are you picking? That... The Browns. The Browns have a solid defense. The Browns do have a solid defense. And that's why I'm saying the okay, Cardinals yeah, yeah. struggled against a solid defense. A solid defense in the same division. But a solid defense, and they have a pretty good... They have a, they, The Browns have a really good offense, which the 49ers don't really have. The Without Browns George have a, Kittle... They have a decent offense. I, I, I'm I'm with you. I think the Browns are better. I think... I think Not better, but I think they're going to win this game. I think... Uh, I think... The Cardinals are just due for a loss here. Uh, that's my personal opinion about the the whole game. Uh, you, were, I did check the stats about Kyler though. He went 41, 39, 18, 30, and then last week 13. 
He went 18. So it was the week before that he... Yeah, he went He went 18 he against went. the Jacksonville Jaguars. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay, okay. So I, I, I don't know. I, I went think... 18 against Jacksonville? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Good Jacksonville defense. I mean, I'm all for Kyler doing really good because I have him in fantasy, obviously. <laughs> yeah. I think we um, all have him in some league. <laughs> but I also have Rondale Moore, who was like... Who is supposed to be like a really electric person, but they don't just don't, they don't throw it to him. Yeah. And their tight end got hurt, and so I, there's a lot of things. But I, I think. I, is I, it at Cleveland? I think it is. It is, yeah. yeah. It, I think it's another it's factor. Yeah. Dog pound, baby. Hoo, hoo, hoo. I, I am just nervous for the Cardinals to win. Yeah, yeah. They just make me hesitant. Until they can prove it. They're, they're, I mean, another podcast recently also said this. It's just like, I just kind of he- am hesitant with the Cardinals and like until they can prove it to me but I, but I, that my argument for that is what do they have to prove that the last undefeated well they'll prove team? it this week they'll prove it this week when they crush the Browns well, what, what, but what about the Panthers the first three weeks and the Broncos they were 3-0 and and the teams they beat were 0-3 yeah but the the, it, the Cardinals have beaten decent teams but but if that but but that's not the argument is that they're undefeated but like if the, it, just because they're undefeated doesn't mean you know, you could have an easy schedule. Well, you, people could I'm have hard. The Panthers. I, I don't know. People the, could have hard schedules. The Cardinals. Well, I mean, the Cardinals have. Beat I mean, like the. I mean, like the Rams. Cardinals they, beat they, the Rams. The, the, so what else do they have to do? They did beat the that, Rams. That that is. A, that All right, is let me let me read the team. They beat the Vikings. They beat the Jags, and they beat the Rams, and they beat the Niners. I would say that is, uh, two. Uh, that's a, one of the best teams. Yeah, the Rams. The Rams and then good two team. above average teams. I thought you were gonna say one of the best teams, the 49ers. <laughs> well, yeah, the 49ers. Right. I mean, I'll right up there. All right, we can sit here and debate all day. I, I will just have to wait till Sunday. Let's just do it. We'll see it. Yeah, let's just do it. We'll have to wait till Sunday. Uh, Sam, read through all your picks. Fresh My, recap. Uh, I'm going the Jacksonville Jaguars, Carolina Panthers, Los Angeles Chargers, Indianapolis Colts, and. Cleveland Browns. Going Jags, Panthers, Chargers, Colts, Cardinals. I'm going the Jags, the Vikings, the Ravens, the Colts, and the Browns. All right, there we go. I think I'm going on or I almost said home time. <laughs> I think I'm going five and zero this week. I'm confident in myself. Own five. Maybe. Probably. All right, let's send them off with our song. What's our song for the week? Song of the week. Skip. Oh, I'm starting. Yeah. All right, here we go. Oh, big song, big song. You guys probably thought I was going country. Not this week. We're gonna go with. Arguably the best song by this band, and that is Fool's Gold by One Direction. Have you guys ever heard that song? No. Listen to it on the... You live here. Listen to it <laughs> on the drive home. Listen to it on the drive home. I'll let you know what I think. Oh, it's such a... What you got there, Logie? My song of the week, I'm going with my main man, Nick D. Fine Apple. I'm sure you may have heard it. It was a, a, a sensation on TikTok, and it got to, like, number three on Spotify. Um, have my, I have not. I've never heard it on, on TikTok. Yeah, the, that's where I found it was this guy on TikTok. And, you know, give my boy Nick D a listen. Uh, I have some of his other songs. It's really good. Um, he, I mean, he just, like, started on TikTok, showed his song, and it blew up. And that was really cool. And it kind of just shows that, like, if you want to do something, put your yeah. mind to it, you can do it. And yeah. so yeah, We're give my boy proof of it, baby. give my boy Nick D a follow. Show pineapple, super good song, super fun song. Um, really, it was like a really good summary song, um, very upbeat. So yeah, it is catchy. Mine is Justin Moore's "Till My Last Day." Good one. I'll be loving you. Mm-hmm. I'll be loving both of you mm-hmm. till my last. Yeah, day. never heard of that. I don't know. Oh. That, I don't know who that band is. I, <laughs> I went country this week, you know. Yeah, I did. Sweet. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, I'm in a little country groove going into the mm. going into the the weekend. Mm, mm. Nice. It's a good song. It's a good one. Not my favorite Justin. Probably not even a top five. Wouldn't even make my Justin Moore cream of the crop. I, I, I mean, it's not one. It's not my favorite by by him. But this week, but it's this you're into week. it. I yeah. love yeah. it. I get you. I get you. To yeah. my last. All right. Day. Song of the week. Not song of the week. Time. Song of yeah. the week. Absolutely. Dude. Well, that wraps up our show for this week. Thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching if you're on YouTube. Uh, if you're on tu- YouTube, make sure to like, subscribe. Click uh, that comment. bell, baby. Yeah, get notifications on. Um, comment your favorite um, TV shows and what you think teams are going to win this week or what your favorite song is, what song you're listening to this week. Make sure you follow us on our social medias, uh, at Spoon Snatchers. Oh. Okay. Boom. 
Yep. Yeah. Yep. Instagram, Twitter. Instagram, Twitter. All that. Make sure you follow us on Spotify and uh, Apple Podcasts. Wherever you get your podcast at, follow us in there. Share. We'll be, we greatly appreciate that. Uh, helps us build us up. Keep getting out some good content to you guys. You got anything else to say there, Skip? No, that's really about it. You got it all. Good episode, guys. Hey. Oh, wait. Hell, I was ready. Do it again. Do it again. Do it again. Do it again. Do it again.